Well, a very good evening to you all and uh, thank you for joining us for this Tuesday evening prayer, Stations of the Resurrection, and um, we'll begin in the traditional fashion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, welcome. Um, this is the second of five. Uh, trying to keep up to date with all the... Uh, <laughs> all of the permutations of the state of the various series that we're doing. Um, so this is the second of five stations of the resurrection mixed with kind of Iona evening prayer. And um, last week we were looking at resurrection stories um, which involved Jesus, what was the focus last week? Somebody tell me. <laughs> we were uh, looking at Mary and Peter. That's it. Not being recognisable. Sorry, Jesus not being recognisable. Um, this week, the focus is on how Jesus appears to more than one person at a time, including many. Um, and, and the way that, in a way, just increases the number as we go through the new testament so we're focusing on those collective meetings with jesus and what they might tell us about our own meeting with jesus ourselves we've got rather than um objects we've got images to go with the uh, stations this evening and I hope you'll find them kind of relevant. Um, I'll explain them as we go along. So if you did have the order of service, uh, we come to the opening responses. Um, and we begin with this story of Jesus meeting the women. O oh, risen Christ, when you appeared to the women who had come to anoint your body, you told them, not to be afraid be present with us and take from us all anxiety and fear so we have an image which is just of two women i took that from the internet it's uh, in celebration of um, the international Women's Day, and I think these two women are connected to the Sue Ryder charity in some way, but uh, they're kind of just representative, uh, and they're a mother and a daughter, but they're representative of the women who meet Jesus. Our second story is when Jesus meets the disciples. O oh, risen Christ, you appeared to your disciples in the locked room and said, Peace be with you. Be present with us so that your peace dwells in our hearts deeply. So for the peace, we have these peace doves. This is one that was... Uh, based on a drawing by Picasso, who did more than one peace dove. And uh, you might remember the shapes were used last Pentecost, and may get, they were in church, or even if we're not, may get used in Pentecost again. Um, so Jesus says, peace be with you, and that is the heart of, of our reflection on that passage. And the final station this evening is the rather different one of the account 
that Paul gives of meeting the risen Jesus. Um, and within that account, leading up to it, he talks about Jesus meeting 500 brothers and sisters at once. Uh, it's the only time that that happens that is mentioned in the gospel. So we have a picture here of, of an individual within a crowd. You can see one person within that crowd sort of looking up and therefore being marked out and another piece dove and disappearing behind the piece, which is good. O risen Christ, who appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at once, be present with us, and whilst we cannot gather together in numbers, remind us of the continued power of our communal life. O risen Christ, you are risen from the dead. Praise and glory to the God of life who is stronger than all kinds of death. Be present with us who are risen with you. So to this first station of the, the story of Jesus meeting the women. And this is our fourth station of the resurrection. Jesus meets the women. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in him shall never die. Hallelujah. So this is a reading from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 28. But the angels said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised as he said. See the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, greetings and they came to him took hold of his feet and worshipped him then jesus said to them do not be afraid go and tell my brothers to go to galilee there they will see me jesus appears to the women first and I think it's really significant and interesting that he does. In each of the gospel stories, the women are the first witnesses to the resurrected Jesus. In John's gospel, it's Mary Magdalene alone. And she's often called the apostle to the apostles because of it. Jesus tells her to go and tell the disciples that uh, he is risen. But in each account in the Gospels, it is the women who, who discover Jesus first after the resurrection. It is perhaps no surprise because this group of women have been with Jesus throughout his ministry. They have followed him on that dangerous road from Galilee to Jerusalem. They are part of that apostolic group. It's only later that the apostles are identified only as men. And Paul is very clear that the apostles are men and women. When the disciples run away from the Garden of Gethsemane, the women still follow. They are with Jesus on his road to Golgotha and the crucifixion and they witness the crucifixion and we don't get a sense that apart from the 
one disciple that Jesus loved mentioned in John's gospel. We don't get a sense that any of the other male disciples are, are witnessing Jesus' death on the cross. So they're there the whole time. And perhaps it's therefore no surprise that they are there on the morning of the third day to bring these spices, to anoint his body, to do these little acts of remembrance and reverence for his body, just in the way that they have supported him throughout his ministry. We understand that they support him materially. They provide food and, and money for the disciples in their ministry. So it's no surprise they're there. And then Jesus meets them. He greets them. And that greeting gives them great joy as well as the fear that, uh, that we read about. So it's a great shame then that this history got overtaken by the men in the church because very quickly the women's role was reduced from equal apostles, first witnesses, disciples of Jesus's to being mere helpers of the men in ministry. And for centuries, the women were locked out of the church in terms of leadership. Uh, and it's, uh, I'm sure, a deep, deep sadness to Jesus that that's the case. But what about for us, perhaps, in these days of lockdown and separation, I wonder if it is more difficult for women to experience that isolation. Because as we have a sense from the Gospels, women have a strong sense of community, of togetherness, and of acting collectively as we see they do in this passage. So perhaps to be denied that opportunity of gathering with friends, with relatives, perhaps it's even more difficult for women to experience this, this lockdown. I'll be put right by the women among you. Yes, yeah, so perhaps not more difficult, but more distressing, more um, more of a restriction because community is so significant in the lives of women. And the fact that Jesus appears to them first should give us great cause for thought. We, um, we come to a prayer now that reflects our gospel passage. We praise you and we bless you, our risen Lord Jesus, King of glory, for your simple word of greeting made the hearts of the women leap with joy. Speak your word of love to those whose hearts are broken, that they too may hear your loving, beckoning call. To you, Lord Jesus, whose call summons us to life in all its fullness, be honour and glory now and forever. Amen. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. We come now to our fifth station, for which we have these peace doves as a reminder. And uh, the passage that we're going to read is from John's Gospel, 
when Jesus meets the disciples in the upper room. This only happens in John and Luke for some reason. It's important to them for this physical meeting to happen and with the risen Jesus, who is very importantly for Luke, uh, is a fleshly being, an incarnated Jesus, just as um, as he was in his life, he's able to take sustenance and to uh, to be with them in their fellowship, as well as physically present. So the fifth station, Jesus appears to the disciples. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in him shall never die. Hallelujah. A reading from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 20. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. So Jesus meets his disciples. And this is the beginning of a process, I would suggest. The disciples aren't immediately on meeting the risen Jesus made into this band of uh, evangelists, create a new church, a new community, and go and um, proclaim the gospel. No, it takes time. It isn't clear how much time it takes. Um, the gospel, the gospel vary in, in the accounts, and none of them are precise about timing. But we get a sense of some considerable amount of time spent with the risen Jesus. But it begins here, and it begins very significantly with a word which is peace. Peace be with you. Jesus says this is the first thing. He doesn't show them his wounds first, because that might be to say, where were you when this was happening to me? Because all of them, all of the disciples, the male apostles, abandoned Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. He doesn't recall that. He just begins with a note of reconciliation, restoration, peace be with you. And I think that that is really important for us to hang on to. Because that is the point which creates a foundation for the community that Jesus wants his disciples to build. He wants them to build a community of forgiveness and Resurrection, restoration. So he begins with peace. He shares his peace with them and he breathes on them the Holy Spirit and shares the peace again, the peace of God. And then he says, If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. He's, he's saying to them, It's up to you to carry forward into this community this message of reconciliation and of forgiveness because that is the foundation of our worshipping community, our worshipping life. We can only build communities of love and uh, fellowship if we start from the basis of forgiven sins 
of forgiving one another, of not holding on to grudges, not bearing wounds and scars, but of forgiving one another. I think there's something about this current crisis, this pandemic that is teaching, hopefully all of us, that we are equal in need, that we have an, an interdependence, that we share in that equality of need one with another. We are interdependent. And I love to see you, Marjorie. That's okay, that's fine. We're just talking about the peace that Jesus gives his disciples as the foundation of our community of love, our community of faith. And it is the foundation, I think. And I think this pandemic is teaching us that we have to live that life of forgiveness and reconciliation. And if we do, we give ourselves the best chance of creating a strong community of love. I think it's a great concern that there is a move in America among some of the political leaders there to blame the emergence of the virus to blame it on China. It's a deep, deep error and can do no good. And as a Christian um, nation, if they wish to call that, then they should run from that idea that there is benefit to be gained from blaming another country or a virus that is just natural. So we are called to live the life of those who are forgiven and those who therefore forgive. And Jesus says, just as I have been sent to you, so I now send you. And that's our call as well. We are being sent as disciples and as witnesses to the risen Jesus, as those who are forgiven and those who recognize the power of forgiveness. So a prayer. We praise you and we bless you, our risen Lord Jesus, King of glory. For in your birth you were proclaimed the Prince of Peace. And in your resurrection you breathe into your people peace beyond this world's understanding. Be present, Lord, this day with those whose lives are disfigured by conflict and those whose hearts know no peace. To you, Lord Jesus, true bringer of the peace of heaven, the honour and glory, now and forever. Amen. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. So we come now to the sixth station represented here by the picture of, of an individual face in a crowd. The sixth station, Jesus meets 500. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in him shall never die. Amen. This is a reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians chapter 15. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers and sisters at one time, 
most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. This is the only time in the New Testament that Jesus meeting 500 at once is mentioned. We can see in this passage how already Paul has begun that process of, of removing the women from the from the story because he mentions Cephas and the twelve, but he doesn't mention Jesus meeting the women. But he does mention this meeting with five hundred brothers and sisters at once. We can only speculate as to when that was, what it was like. But I think it's poignant at this time when mass gatherings are prevented and we aren't able to gather together in church um, to think that Jesus appeared to so many. And I think it's probably intended by Paul as a representative number of such huge size that it represents humanity because Jesus is risen for the whole world and Christ is universal I believe that all people of faith come to God through Jesus even if that isn't explicitly the case in their religion but I believe that in every encounter with God, Jesus is present. And the resurrected Jesus is reconciling not just humanity to God and to one another, but reconciling the whole of creation to God. Paul also says that we are being reconciled, but everything that God created is being reconciled to God through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. So it's a very profound reflection that these resurrection appearances are emblematic of a reconciliation of the universe back to God who created it and loves it and creates it continually. But the point for Paul of this list, and because it's a list and because it's very early on in the New Testament in chronology, it probably has a sort of authenticity. Um, it sounds like it's the sort of thing that's been told to other people, that there are these uh, resurrection appearances, uh, including to Cephas and to James and other apostles, and to these 500. But the point for Paul of telling this list is that he can add himself to the end of it. And he does so as an apostle. He does so as somebody to whom the resurrected Jesus also appeared. Even though this is long after Jesus has ascended to the Father and is um, hidden from the sight of the disciples, Paul is claiming to meet the risen Jesus in just the same way as those who met Jesus is in his risen resurrection body. And I think that Paul opens a door. I don't think he intends to open a door, but I think he opens a door for us in saying that because he's allowing us to believe and expect to meet the risen Jesus ourselves as individuals. This is the great mystery of, of the resurrection, that it can be so universal that Jesus is reconciling the whole world and everyone in it to God, but that Jesus meets each one of us individually as the risen Christ. 
it is a deep mystery how that is possible. But it's important because we work from our experience of God, our own experience, and our own experience is unique. We are the experts of our own experience of God and nobody can gain sales in what our own experience is. That is our own theology, our story of God, how we meet God in prayer, how we meet Jesus at those points in our lives like now when we most need Jesus, Jesus is present, and how we have perhaps had a moment, particular moment in our lives, perhaps repeated particular moments of recognition, of conversion. So the individual is caught up in the universal and it is through our own individual experience that we can share in the experience of the reconciliation of the universe. And it is through our own experience that we are sent out to share with others the love of God through Jesus' resurrection. And we do that because we are our own experts of our own experience of God. That is our foundation as well, as well as knowing that we're forgiven and endlessly welcomed by God through Jesus. We are sought out, we are called, we are longed for, and it is the risen Jesus who has begun that and will make that offer endlessly for us. Just as the risen Jesus does it for the whole creation. A prayer. We praise you and we bless you, our risen Lord Jesus, King of glory, for your resurrection is a revelation to the whole world. As you reveal yourself powerfully to so many, reveal yourself now as the hope for our world. To you, Lord Jesus, going beyond the limits of our understanding, the honour and glory, now and forever. Amen. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. So those are the three resurrection stations for this evening. Next week there will be three more. And the theme next week, as I recollected, will be fellowship. Jesus eating with the disciples, which again is a theme throughout the resurrection stories. We're going to finish um, with a little short time of intercession. Um, so if you're able to pray these prayers with me, we will share in that way the resurrection what it means for us with those on our hearts today and those in need in our world. Let us pray. Loving Jesus, risen and glorified, we thank you that we worship you in community. You are the God of relationship and in your love we see and know love and we love one another. We thank you for your word of life and for our community of faith. You spoke peace to your disciples and breathed on them your spirit. May we know your peace in our hearts and in the strength of your spirit, proclaim and live your peace in our world. We thank you for all those who have helped us to know you. 
and to see. Give us grace and wisdom to know how to be able to do the same for all those we meet. We pray for your will. We pray for healing and strength for those who are fighting this virus. For courage and perseverance for all medical and care workers. For wisdom and compassion for all political leaders, their advisors and decision makers. For unity and cooperation in our communities. And for all who volunteer to keep neighbours and others safe. For faithfulness and imagination in every member of our church. That we proclaim the risen Jesus in this the parish of all sweet. For patience and peace to pervade every household. And to bless every family and every individual and for your love Lord to fill our hearts and to bless us in our rest this night Amen Our closing responses I invite you to look at your hands to look at your feet to Look at your heart, feel your heart, and to look at the cross. There is a cross here to look at if you haven't got one there. Um, and the response is God's own for the world. And then at the end, when I say this is God's world, we say, and we will serve God in it. So the response is God's own for the world. Look at your hands. See the touch and the tenderness. God's own for the world. Look at your feet. See the path and the direction. God's own for the world. Look at your heart. See the fire and the love. God's own for the world. Look at the cross. See God's Son and our Saviour. God's own for the world. This is God's world and we will serve God in it. May God bless you. May you be kept forever in God's care and may your lives be led with love. May God's warm welcome shine from our hearts and Christ's own peace prevail through every day till greater life shall come. Amen. Thank you very much once again for joining us this evening. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mary, for managing the meeting, which I can't possibly do from back here. <laughs> um, and to John Sutton, as always, for setting things up for us. I will be a little bit more on the ball next week and get this liturgy to you by email. Um, I'll get John to send it out on mass. Um, if you're able to join us tomorrow evening, Wednesday at 7 p.m., we have our prayer group, uh, meditation group. I don't know what you call it, really. Um, but we're meeting the Risen Jesus in that session and uh, experiencing Lectio Divina. Holy reading. 
And so if you've not done that before, um, please do join us. If you have done it, please do join us. Um, and uh, next week, as I say, at seven o'clock, we will uh, explore the stories in which Jesus eats with the disciples in the resurrection story. But thank you once again for joining me and God bless you tonight. And thank you. Thank you. And bye. 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 Bye.